Invasive alien species are one of the drivers of biodiversity loss, consequently affecting ecosystem services as well as human health. Understanding the process of invasion and impacts of IAS to ecosystems will help us make sensible actions toward control and eradication of this IAS. I will present a brief discussion on the invasion process of IAS and their impact to ecosystems. First, let us differentiate what is native species from non-native or alien species. Native species is an organism occurring within its natural past or present range and dispersal potential. Whereas, a non-native or alien species is an organism occurring outside its natural past or present range and dispersal potential. Before the introduction of animal raising and farming, humans were considered natural dispersal agents similar to animals. Hence, species that were introduced in an era before the beginning of the Neolithic period are considered native. Beyond this period, species that were distributed outside their natural range that are primarily mitigated by humans are considered alien species. For example, Solanum lasiocarpum and Solanum melongena are both occurring in the Philippines. On one hand, the native range of Solanum lasiocarpum is tropical and subtropical Asia to northern Queensland, and so it is native to the Philippines. On the other hand, the native range of Solanum melongena is south central China, east Himalaya, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Thailand, and Vietnam. It was introduced in the Philippines and therefore considered a non-native or alien species. However, not all non-native species are invasive. Invasive alien species are non-native or introduced species that threaten native biological diversity. Alien species establish in an area where they previously did not occur. About 10% of the established species becomes invasive. With their ability to compete and spread, to expand their range on their own mechanisms, and their abundance continue to increase. How do they invade their non-native range? In their native range, species have their life history and genetic traits that predispose this species to rapid population expansion, phenotypic plasticity, or the potential for rapid evolution. In its transport, the species may have interactions with vectors that affect the likelihood of its invasion. Propagules may also be resistant to pressure related to the likelihood of establishment. Invasive species have high environmental tolerance, allowing it to successfully establish in new areas. It is in these steps that invasion should be prevented, such as identifying particular life history stages and genetic traits that are targets for management. After establishment, these alien species take time to adapt in their new environment. They produce more propagules in preparation for the following colonization. Invasive species usually have high reproductive rate, high dispersal rate, and competitive advantage against native species. These allow IAS to spread rapidly. It is in these steps that eradication should be considered, considering their evolutionary potential and how the landscape structure influence spread. If not eradicated, this IAS will have a great impact in ecology, specifically on biodiversity and ecosystem structure. Native species are threatened and potentially be displaced by these alien species that are less resistant and less resilient to natural calamities. It will also cause human impact by affecting our health and economy, especially in agriculture industry. In these steps, IAS control and restoration of ecosystems should be considered. Factors such as traits of invasive or native species that allow prediction of the success of restoration efforts should be identified. IAS impacts include competition, predation, and potential hybridization with native species, interference with ecosystem services, and damage to landscapes and agriculture. They may also serve as vectors of diseases causing an impact on human health and well-being. The following clips mention other impacts of IAS. In an ecological standpoint, it has greater negative impacts, one of which would be its indirect effects on animal behavior. And so, how is this possible? 
Now, let's say that you have an invasive plant. Now, usually, there are those invasive plant species who can provide better cover or better protection to your native prey. And so, given that your native prey is herbivorous, store more of the seeds of your invasive plant rather than the native plants, which now leads to better invasion of your invasive plant species. Some invasive species may harbor parasites, posing health-related problems. They may even be hosts to pests, causing agricultural problems. Others may be allelopathic, and majority of them are very hard to eradicate due to specialized parts or behaviors. Nevertheless, they are still being introduced into a certain area for certain economic benefits such as our crops, say for instance, guava. In an ecological sense, invasive plants may also serve uh, favor favorable functions such as a source of pollen and nectar for a variety of insect species. Thank you for watching.